Good morning. And welcome to Worship at All Saints. It's great to have you here on South Main Street or worshiping with us from home on this, the 21st Sunday after Pentecost. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be our God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, in Christ you have revealed your glory among the nations. Preserve the works of your mercy that your church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of your name through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated for the reading of God's word. This is a reading from the book of Job. Um, Job is... Uh, forced to recognize how little he understands the ways of the world and of God. More importantly for him, he at last has a direct relationship with the Lord. A reading from Job 38, beginning at the first verse. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? Or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? The word of the Lord. Let's... um, Join together with the Psalms, uh, responding responsively. Psalm 104. Bless the Lord, O my soul. You wrap yourself with light as with a cloak. You lay the beams of your chambers in the waters above. You make the winds your messengers. You have set the earth upon its foundations. You covered it with the deep as with a mantle. At your rebuke they fled. They went up into the hills and down to the valleys beneath. You set the limits that they should not pass. O Lord, how manifold are your works. In this New Testament lesson, we hear how through obedience and suffering, Christ has reached the perfection of his destiny and was designated by God to be the eternal high priest. The high priesthood of Jesus is the great theme of the letter to the Hebrews. Like the high priests of the Old Covenant, Christ is chosen from among human beings and so has sympathy with human weakness. But he is the son, and he has now been named high priest forever. He succeeds Melchizedek, a royal and priestly figure from antiquity, and has been made the source of salvation 
for all who trust in him. This is a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward, since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins, as well as for those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor, but takes it only when called by God, just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to him and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And he said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink, or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, We are able. Then Jesus said to them, The cup that I drink, you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized, you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be the first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Today's gospel starts with disciples obsessing over who will be closest to Jesus, leading to Jesus teaching about God's take on importance and power and greatness. Jesus makes it explicit that the reversal of values in God's community is a direct challenge to the values of the dominant culture, where wielding power over others 
is what makes you great. A culture today that seems to have lost its ability to be civil with one another, wandering away from what binds us together. But civility is more than just being polite. It comes from the Latin civilis, meaning befitting a citizen. It is a term that is a comfort to some and repressive to others. It is the baseline of respect that we owe one another in public life, says Keith Bybee, author of How Civility Works. It is set by those of privilege who by positions of power lead a society. Now our first leaders agreed on a baseline in the preamble to the U.S. Constitution. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Maybe you've got that memorized from a long time ago. And the baseline for church civility, what it means to follow Jesus, is outlined in the baptismal covenant. In the questions on page 304 in the common prayer book, we express the ways each of the faithful live their faith both inside and outside of the church's walls. The first four questions are from the Apostles' Creed, asking about our belief in each member of the Trinity, along with a basic understanding of them. These are followed by five questions regarding how we as Christians are called to live out our faith, how we are to live with firm commitment and with a reliance on God's help. And then the last question of our baptismal covenant echoes the opening objective of the preamble to the Constitution. In the preamble, we start with establishing justice, and in the baptismal covenant, we are asked to strive for justice and peace among all peoples and have respect and dignity for every human being. It seems simple and straightforward enough. We are citizens of a country and a kingdom of God, both of which under God that begin and value justice, the foundation and the mark of a civil society. But as saints and sinners, we are human. And our selfish and sinful side thrives thrives in a country that claims freedom for all and feeds our insatiable appetite for free will. Having a choice in everything that we do and how we act and what we do. It assumes that we are completely free to choose our behavior without regard for others. Free to be self-sufficient and to live the American dream that one can prosper and succeed through my hard work and my self-determination. That's all we need. Our U.S. culture puts a premium on confidence and enthusiasm, participation. We tell our kids that anyone can be elected president. So it is often difficult to let go of the idea that it is only fair for my voice my voice to be heard and taken seriously by all of you. Go ahead and read the letters to the editor. Watch public input at a school board meeting. Or wander and get caught up in a rabbit hole while you do your own research on the internet. Too often we use these things, that is, we bend scripture and opinion and conspiracy theories to delude ourselves and to support the truth. The truth that places me and my opinions at the center of reality. At the only thing that matters, that's freedom. That's justice. That's the American way. And along the way, of course, we scream and stamp our feet, lording our freedom to share our voice over those that we belittle and dismiss because we disagree with them. How civil of us.
Civility has also been about making sure that the status quo, the hierarchy of our society, stays the same. Which means racial inequality, gender inequality, class inequality, that these things stay permanent. Or so points out Professor Lynn Itagi, a scholar on civil racism, that is maintaining civility at the expense of racial equality. Civil racism carries the echoes of that historical and bigoted definition of the civilized versus the savage. And isn't that what we do when we write or read those letters to the editor or demand our freedoms in school board meetings or find proof and truth to support our opinions on the internet? Civilized versus savage. She notes that this moment feels like a crisis and cautions that when people call for a restoration of civility, we should note who gets to define it. Who gets to restore or rewrite the social contract. Beloveds, we have our baptismal covenant to guide us. And I would posit that we even have a preamble to the U.S. Constitution to guide us. And that we have wandered away from those two things. And God tells us what is good. God tells us what is required of us to walk humbly with God in all times and in all places. And in today's gospel, Jesus reminds us how at times we really do have to admit that we have no idea what we're talking about. And we must give full authority to another or to others. Because James and John asked to sit at Jesus' right hand shows both a level of arrogance and how they have missed the kingdom of God that Jesus has shared through humility and justice for all. You see, having Jesus in our life never gives us special powers and privileges. It wasn't true then, and it's certainly not true today. And to be the greatest, Jesus says, means to be the slave of all, to serve one another first, not ourselves. He calls us to listen to those whom the world most despises and to do what they ask with urgency and care. Jesus embodies greatness and is the goat, the only goat, but he turns our definition of greatest of all time on its head. It's not about winning. It's not about succeeding. It certainly isn't about lording greatness over another person. You see, for Mark, greatness is hidden in Jesus' life of servanthood, and most especially in his death. And when we proclaim this word, Christ is revealed as Messiah for us, reversing the expectations of authority and death itself. Mark's gospel echoes the Old Testament image of drinking the cup for both good and for ill. And how to be baptized is to be immersed in calamities. Mark, like Paul, ties the early sacramental practice of communion and baptism to Jesus' death on the cross for you. And beloveds, when we pray, your kingdom come, we're praying for civility and justice an end to tyranny and oppression. And we pray this gathered under the cross, a sign of great shame, transformed to be a sign of great honor and service. Beloveds, may you know that you, servants of God, are loved. You are holy. 
You are worthy. And may you in peace and humility and joy serve the Savior who humbled himself for you. We profess our faith with the whole Church using a responsive version of the Nicene Creed, also used in the Church of England. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. my place. Sorry. Can't seem to find my place here. (laughs) Okay. For us and for our salvation, he came down from begotten. Thank you, sorry. Big mistake to staple this. (laughs) God from God, light from light, true God from true God. Begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord who proceeds from the Father and the Son. He has spoken through the prophets. We, in we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. Prayers of the people. Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word of truth, we join in prayer for all of God's creation. Holy One, for the gift of the Church handed down through the ages, and for all who carry on the servant ministry of Jesus, we praise you. Send your Holy Spirit upon all who are discerning calls to ministry in its many forms, and equip them with your gifts. Hear us, O God. Creating One, for the lush and abundant habitat you provide for all your creatures, we praise you. Provide healing for the earth so that waterfowl, reptiles, wild horses, dolphins, and all living things flourish as you intend. Hear us, O God. <laughs> Suffering one, for all who work toward peace and who lead nations with a servant's heart, we praise you. Bring justice for all who suffer violence, persecution, discrimination, hunger, poverty, and homelessness, and create places of refuge for all people. Hear us, O God. Merciful one, for all who do the work of healing in mind, body, and spirit, we praise you. Surround and comfort all who struggle with depression, anxiety, cancer, diabetes, dementia, or any illness, that all may be healed. Hear us, O oh God. Sustaining one, for all who volunteer for the vitality of this congregation, we praise you. Strengthen and encourage greeters, ushers, office volunteers, bakers, counters, committee and group leaders, teachers, students, evangelists, singers, builders, nurturers, and all who serve with generous hearts. Hear us, O oh God. Risen One, we thank you for those who have shaped your church and shared your gospel. Through the witness of your saints, especially Ignatius of Antioch, continue to inspire us with hope until we are all gathered at your eternal feast. Hear us, O God. Confident that you hear us, O God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. Merciful One, uh, we pray especially for comfort for the family of Pam Hans, um, and also for the Lynch families in their grief after the death of Jack Lynch. You're, hear us, O oh God. This is great. One. Let us confess our sin against God and our neighbor. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of God be with you always. Let us share a sign of that peace from our places this morning. That's peace. That's peace. The congregation may be seated for a few brief announcements.
This morning, we will be distributing communion outside in the parking lot immediately following uh, worship. Also outside, you can look for Jacqueline McLaughlin and Mary. Mary, would you stand up on the pew and just wave so people know who you are? There's Mary. So Mary and Jackie will be outside selling tickets for the Wolfboro Cooperative Nursery School, of which Mary is a student. And there is a month-long raffle in the month of November uh, for some great prizes, and it supports the work of the nursery school here at All Saints. Uh, those are, tickets are $10 a piece. They'll be here this Sunday and next Sunday with those tickets. Also, um, following worship today at 10.30 on Zoom will be our coffee hour. We invite you to join us uh, once you get home from church uh, to have further conversation with some folks that maybe you didn't get to see here this morning. Next Sunday, uh, following worship at 10.30, we will have a newcomers gathering in the church library, um, an opportunity for folks that are newer to this um, parish community to ask questions and to get to know us a little bit better. Um, also next Sunday during worship, we will have a healing rite, which we've not had since June. Let us take our offering. Your offering is welcome in the plates at the entrances to this space, virtually uh, online through our website or via the mail or electronic transfer. Let us listen to the gift of music as we give thanks to God for all of God's many blessings. Please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again, you called us to return. Through prophets and sages, you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood, he reconciled us. By his wounds, we are healed. And therefore, we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving, we celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers and mothers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only, and not for strength, for pardon only, and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echo through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. In the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and strength, lengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God were the people of God. Congregation may be seated, and I invite those who are worshiping with us at home to say the prayer for spiritual communion. 
and communion will be distributed in the parking lot immediately following worship. Let us pray our post-communion prayer together. Almighty and ever-living God, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Please stand as you are able for our sending blessing in him. God, the source of glory, God, the word of life, God, the spirit of truth, bless you now and forever. Amen. Bless the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God.